Tech Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. Personal is a um, private personal data vault and uh, personal network where individuals can aggregate and curate all of their own data and then set permissions to who gets access to it, whether that's somebody, uh, another person, uh, or an app, or a company, uh, or an institution of some kind, like a school, or you know, even a government agency. And so what we're trying to do, really, is put the power of data in the hands of people. And uh, we're actually calling that small data. It's like big data applied to human needs, you know, and around, built around the needs and interests of people. My team and I, um, we actually built another company called the Map Network, which helped places actually map themselves. We turned uh, amateurs into uh, map makers. And what we learned about that was that uh, places were being digitized. They were gonna be used in all of the maps and navigation systems of the world. And as we did that, we learned that uh, places wanted to control and own their own data. It was very clear to them that uh, the data about their place was just an extension of the real place. And it just became increasingly clear to us that the same thing was sort of happening to people, that we were being digitized, if you will, by a lot of companies out there who were watching everything we were doing. And so it just became very obvious that this, this same idea of uh, people kind of uh, building and, and managing their own data sets uh, and then benefiting from them was the right thing to do. And, um, and we basically just said, let's look at the, how the system works today, turn it entirely upside down, and build the world's first platform around the needs of people uh, and all the things they can do with their data rather than around the needs of companies. This is my third company, fourth startup. My favorite part of startup life is the, uh, the just the absolute catharsis of, of, of inventing new things with a group of people who are just as excited and passionate about building those kind of things as you are. It's all about the people uh, in the early phases. I've seen so many good ideas where it was just the wrong people, uh, whether they just didn't get together, uh, worked whether, uh, together well for personality reasons or maybe just the wrong mix of skills. But if you don't get the people right, it doesn't often matter how good the idea is. Uh, so I do think that's so critical. And in my case, um, I met my co-founder of my last company, the Map Network, um, really incidentally through my work in Bosnia. And, uh, and so literally my foreign policy life before led me to meet him. And, um, and someone I had been in business school with, another person, Doug Wheeler, um, I was at kind of the end of my first year and um, I said, hey, I'm gonna go start this company. And he's like, hey, I'm staying for the next year, but I'd love to join you. I would just say that you have to stay focused on the people you hire. If, um, you know, people always say culture is important. I mean, culture is not important, it's sort of everything. And like I said, if you can't get that right and the dynamics of the team, it's really hard to overcome that and, and really building a great, great company. The, the hardest thing was um, when you had, in that case particularly, um, we were so clear at how important mapping and uh, navigation and all of that on the mobile device was gonna be but it was still early. It was so clear to us, and, and yet we really had to bootstrap the company, which meant, uh, in our case, taking a focus on things that we knew were not strategically relevant to us, but that generated revenue. When you know this is something I have to try, or I, I know this is something the world needs, um, I, I really do think there's a leap of faith there, and, uh, uh, and so you, you just have to follow your heart. I don't see many companies, early stage companies, that come out of people who are really just studying the market and trying to you know, identify a problem uh, through just you know, sheer quantitative study. Um, I, I think it really comes in, in so many cases from the heart and you just see something. And in fact, it's often difficult to even explain how you had the idea. I mean, it's a proverbial, I sat up in bed one night and I just knew I had to do this. And I think that's what gets you through all those days when you're like not sure how you're gonna get funding or uh, you know, when you have to throw away a bunch of code, you just finished three months writing because you realized it was the wrong thing to do. I mean, they're very dispiriting moments and uh, you have to have that sort of intrinsic faith to get through it.